So you want the width of your bag to be the same width as your zip. So if you have, let's see, if you've got a longer zip, you can make a bigger bag. Each one of these pieces, because it's uh, thin cotton, it doesn't have a huge amount of body to it, I've taken some uh, lightweight interfacing and I've just zigzagged around the outer edge to hold that in place. And I've done that for the main fabric and I've also done it for the lining. So that's a lightweight interfacing. If you want a thicker bag or something with a bit more body, then you can go for a heavier weight interfacing. Or you could even quilt it. So I'm going to take the uh, the outside of the bag face up, so that's with the interfacing down. I'm taking the zip. Now this is the top of the zip. That's where the, the zipper is. And I'm going to turn it over and just place the top edge of the zip to the top edge of the fabric. I'm going to take the lining and we want the main part of the lining to be face to the upper side of the fabric. So basically it's face to face. And very carefully, I'm just going to make sure that that's along the edge there and I'm just going to pop in the pins along here I'm going to put the zipper foot on the sewing machine and we're going to do straight stitch along here over at the machine I'm very quickly going to change the general purpose foot to the zipper foot. Using your finger you can actually feel where the zip goes. Making sure that your machine is set to the straight stitch, I'm going to do a couple of reverse stitches. Never could count. I'm going to do about three reverse stitches. And going by feel, we're going to stitch along the edge of the zip. When it comes to the part where the, the zipper itself is, just change that pin so I can show you. You have the zip slider there. That's quite tricky to stitch around. So I'm going to hold the end of the zip here and very carefully I'm going to unzip it so that is now down here. That means that I can stitch to the end <clears throat> without fear of any wobbles in the stitching. It's wobbles of the scouts at the end. Two or three reverse stitches. And we'll cut. We've now stitched the straight edge along here that goes alongside the zip. And I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to do the zip up again. So ensuring you've got the top of the fabric, if you have a repeat pattern that is one directional, that it's the same way, you're going to put your pieces face to face. So the pattern goes together. And you're doing the outside pieces first.
we want to have the lining pieces face to face. So I'm press putting the lining side to the other lining side and making sure that everything is lined up and neat. Just going to pin that all together. So that's pinned and ready for the next bit of sewing. close to the zipper. So I'm just going to pull that back out of the way. Or not. Now, can you see how it's got stuck there? All I need to do is making sure that the needle is down, lift the presser foot Keep the top part of the zip as flat as you can and just pull it back and that will get it past the presser foot because that does happen rather more than you'd like. A couple of reverses, lift the needle up and cut the thread. You've now finished that line of stitching. So you want to open it up so that you've got one piece of lining attached to each piece of the front and we're just going to do a little line of straight stitch along here to neaten that up. And just using my nail I'm opening that seam up, just pressing it, because there are times when you really can't be bothered to get the iron out. With that done, what I suggest doing is popping a line of pins here just to ensure that that remains as flat as you possibly can. We're going to turn them over and this time I'm putting the pins here and I'll point it in the direction that the machine will be going so that if I'm stitching this way I can pull the pins out. If I'm stitching along here I can pull the pins out easily. Checking that you've got the machine set to straight stitch and I'm setting it to a slightly longer stitch before it was on two and a half I'm setting it to three and I want the needle to be in really quite close to the edge and I'm going to take my time with the stitching it's always worth taking your time with with top stitching um, because it's going to show and if it goes wonky it'll annoy you. So, a couple of back stitches and we will head off hopefully. And to keep this even I'm actually using side of the presser foot as a guide so I'm matching the side of the presser foot up to the edge of the fabric which will hopefully keep it nice and straight. If you can avoid running over pins do because it blunts your needle and it doesn't do your pins much good either. And it's nice to breathe at this point as well because if you're doing something carefully, there's a habit of holding your breath. OK, 
Okay, and again, I'm going to take the zip slider back. A couple of back stitches. So there that is, all neatly stitched there, and hopefully all neatly stitched on the back. So I'm just going to run up this other side. I'm now going to change my foot from the zipper foot to the general purpose one. Just popping that in place, foot down and it's clipped in place. Before you go any further it's really important to undo the zip. All will become clear shortly. I'm going to turn fabric so that the outside of the bag is faced together and I'm taking the lining, this part of the lining and the lining parts are going to be together. When you're pinning it you need to ensure that the zip, because if you look it's an H shape so when you're pinning that you need to ensure that the zip goes folded down into the lining. So you've got the main part of the fabric, the outer here, and the lining is here. Remember the, the stripe is the lining. And you fold the zip so that it's going into the lining. and you pin it so that it stays down. I'll show you on the other side. Okay, You've got, on this side, we've got the main part of the fabric and we've got the lining and we have the H which we're going to take Remember, we're taking that down into the lining, which is now on the other side. So very carefully folding those and matching these seams up. So if you look, you want to make sure that these are together. And pin. Because I've got a, a repeat pattern here, I'm doing what I can to match up the wheels of the van. And when I was cutting them out, I took that into consideration. So if you haven't cut it out, in a way that it's okay to match, then you don't need to worry about that part. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave those pins sticking out like that and you will see why shortly. All these mysteries. When I start to sew, I'm going to start sewing from pin that's closest to the top and that's the um, perpendicular pin and I've made sure that I've changed the stitch to back to a two and a half because remember I'd set it to three to do the top stitching I'm going to go one two the 
corner. I'm going to have the needle down, lift the presser foot and turn the corner. And we're off again. What I did there was just check to see what direction the hem was lying on that side and that's pointing up towards the main part of the fabric on both sides so I'm just making sure that it's pointing up on that side as well. Press the foot up, turn the corner and this time we're going up to this pin which is perpendicular. And if you look, there's a gap of about three inches there. So I'm going to cut the thread. What I need to do now is to just very carefully, can you see where the stitching goes up into the corner? Well, I'm going to put my thumbnail over the edge of those stitches to protect them and I'm just going to cut the corner off. Another corner, cover up the stitching, snip, cover up the stitching, snip. Now you get to find out why we left the gap and it's because you need to turn it around very carefully we're going to start with the lining and push that through we're going to take the other corner and push that through and you'll also discover why you left the zip open just turning that through like that because if your zip wasn't open, you wouldn't be able to do this bit. Okay, so far so good, but we've got rather icky corners. So taking your pointy scissors, don't use your snips because they tend to be too pointy. These have got the ends ground flat. So finding your opening you want to go to each corner and very carefully and I mean carefully just ease the fabric through. You're not pushing, you're easing. Just very carefully ease that to a point. And again, for the other corners. There we go. The next part is to sew up the hole. Now I've put this seam on the side because it's a lot less noticeable than if it's in the bottom. <clears throat> and what I would do we're about to have a cat invasion. Mm -hmm. Just mark where the end of the opening is. You can do it by hand if you so wish. So I'm just very quickly. Hello, puss. Meet the moly. Hello gorgeous. You're a bit soggy my darling. Hello. Just gonna pin around. Hello. So again using a straight stitch, uh, the opening starts there and it ends there. So I'm just going to do a little row of straight stitch as close to the edge as I can. A 
Circular and reverse stitches. Going to pop the lining into the bag. Push that top seam up. Do the bag up. And hey presto. One bag. That might be a nice size for a chocolate stash, I think. Yeah. All lovely and ready for some chockey. Have fun.